So welcome back. This is part two of the Excolibrain dialogue mapping case study. And in today's video, we are going to look at further configuring the relationships and the links in our Excolibrain. We are also going to be adding some new nodes and we are going to look at embedded nodes as well. So there's plenty to learn. And then there's going to be still a part three where we're going to look at some additional things like web links and just polishing the whole thing up. So hopefully by the end of the third part, you will have a good hands-on understanding of how to configure Excalibrain. So today let's continue from where we left off. So we have the remote work policy in the center and we defined the ontology for these two positions, but at the moment you don't yet see the position reflected on the links. So we're going to open plugin settings again, and this time I'm going to scroll down, well, before we scroll down. So what I want to show you is here at the top of the settings, you have this section about ontology. I also have a bit of a description here that tries to explain what an ontology is. But here, what I want to point out is we have the position. So this is what we added in part one to our ontology. We have position here as a next friend type. And then I'm going to scroll down all the way to styling and I'm going to come to the link styles. Now link styles work very similar to how node styles work from the perspective of inheritance. So we have a base link style and then all of the different node types or link types that you have here are going to inherit this and you can see that we have lots of different types. Many of these come pre-packaged with Excolibrain, so you might want to uh, delete these later on. I want to set up Excolibrain such that in every case the ontology is visible on the link. So I'm going to change the base link style for now and I'm going to just scroll down here and I'm going to turn on this link here to show label on link and otherwise I think I'm going to leave it like this. If you want you can make the text slightly smaller or bigger. I like this relative sizing that's why it comes with the base setup so I'm going to leave it like this. Now additionally you might also want to display arrows so here I'm going to say that I'm going to set the start arrow head to be an arrow. And then when we close our settings here, so now we did all of this setting for the base style. I didn't do any settings for the position type of style. We will see a different case a bit later on where I'm going to do settings. When I close settings, then you will see that now the arrow is pointing from here to here because it is pointing to the start. Arrows can be a bit confusing. So depending on how you think about arrows and what's pointing from where to where, um, that, that depends on your internal dialogue and logic. So you have a couple of things that you can do around arrows. So first of all, the base setting, how Excolibrain comes or Excolibrain comes is an inverse arrow direction, which means that if I turn this off, then automatically the arrows will change direction and then it will point the other way. What's considered a start and an end will be different. Or if I want to keep the inverse logic, then I can come down here and instead of setting the start arrow head to be an arrow, I can set the end arrow head to be an arrow. And when I do this, then you can see that 
the end result is the same. So I have the remote work policy here. I have these arrows pointing to these two other nodes with the words position written on them. So now let's continue to build our graph, but I'm going to do one thing here. So I'm going to, first of all, click on yes to remote work. And here I'm going to turn on the embedded mode. When I turn on the embedded mode, I can actually close this window. So you will see here, I have this button that synchronizes navigation between the leaf and uh, the Excalibrain view. When I turned on the embedded mode, then this connector got disconnected. So if I now turn off embedded mode, you will see that the connection is on. And when I turn again to embedded mode, then the connection is disconnected. So I can close this. If you don't like this behavior, again, in Excalibrain settings, you can scroll down all the way to behavior and you can click here to synchronize navigation with the embed toggle. If you turn this off, then the two buttons will work independently from each other. Again, you can play with this a bit later on to see the effects. I can show you the effects. So right now, if I click on remote work policy, you can see nothing happens on the right hand side. If I turn this button on, then when I click on remote work policy, then that page on the left hand side changes as well. But now I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to close this and actually I'm going to close this as well. So now we have the note here in the center. You will also notice, maybe you will, maybe you're not, but I'm now <coughs> going to highlight it to you. So you will notice that this now has a light background. And that is because by default, Excolid Raw comes with the configuration that the style of the embedded node should follow the style of Excolid Raw. And now we are in a light Excolid Raw drawing and therefore this is going to be light as well. So if I switch here to, I turn Excolibrain off in a way. So I'm going to turn off view mode. Then I can switch here to dark mode and you will see that this turns dark. The colors in this case look ugly. So I don't recommend this. Now, if you don't like this, so if you would like to see dark colors here, this is an example when you need to go to Excolid Raw settings to do the changes. So I'm going to click plugin settings and I'm going to make these changes. I need to click here on Excolid Raw. And in Excolid Raw settings, I need to scroll down to the display section. And here at the top of the display section, you will see that Markdown embeds to match Excolid Draw theme. If I turn this off, then when I come back, you will see that now the document follows a dark theme. If you have Excolibrain running, then it might turn out that you need to close and open Excolibrain again for this change to take effect. That's normal, but just letting you know that that's something that can happen. So now I'm going to again turn Excolibrain back on because you see now this is Excolid Raw. So this is now Excolibrain is not running. To turn Excolibrain back on, I need to open the command palette and I just need to type in brain normal. With this, Excolibrain will re recognize that this document is already open and it will turn to Excolibrain view mode. So let's continue editing our documents. So first of all, I want to define here the supporting argument as an ontology as well. So again, I have two options. I can either right click and click here, add supporting argument to Excolibrain ontology. So that's a perfectly valid option. That's what we did in part one. 
This time around, I'm going to press Control or Command B and I'm going to just type in Next. And here in the Common Palette, I can choose Excalibrain Add Data View Field to Ontology as Next. And when I click that, then you will see in a second that Excalibrain will update and you will see that improved work-life balance moved from the bottom to the side and also now supporting argument as an ontology is displayed on this link. Now we are going to create improves work-life balance. The way to create the document is I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the supporting argument and I'm going to create a markdown document. So with this now I have my markdown document right here and this is going to be a document type argument. So that's why here I have the argument tag at the top and it contains a question and this is the question how can remote work improve employee work-life balance. And to make this question again a right-hand side or next type of ontology, you already know the answer. So what do I need to do? Yes, you guessed it right. I need to right-click and I need to add question to Excolibrain ontology. And I'm going to add this as a next friend. And then Excolibrain will update and will add this question to the right hand side of my graph. Let's just do a final setting in today's session. We're going to format the supporting ontology link because I think it would look nice if supporting arguments would be green and objecting arguments would be red. So how do I do that? I think you can also guess this by now. You need to open Excolibrain settings and in Excolibrain settings we're going to scroll down to the very bottom and here we're going to select from the next relationships we're going to select supporting argument. Yes, so here's next supporting argument. On the supporting argument what I want to change is I want to change the color of this line. I want this to be green. So a supporting argument should be green. And I actually wanted to make this a bit thicker. So I'm going to click this that I'm setting this property of the supporting argument link type different compared to the base link type. And I'm going to make this a three thick. So you can see now I have a nice thick green arrow right there. And when I close settings, then you will see that here the remote work policy has this supporting argument with the work-life balance here. And we can stop right here. Next time we are going to continue by adding some evidences as well that are going to be some web links and we'll see how you can embed links in here as well. Plus we are going to do some further formatting and settings and hopefully by the end of that you'll have a pretty comfortable understanding of how Excolibrain works with the basics and then you can do your own settings as well. Thank you.